With that, I would like to kick us off by introducing Amy Wright to come up to the stage and share with us a little bit of her story. She has created an amazing business that, that stemmed from personal experience and, and very much her, her heart. And it's been an honor getting to know you, Amy, as you really embody the spirit of, of small businesses around this country. Amy, because of the PPP program, was able to rehire the 120 workers that she was forced to lay off. And now those workers, all of which have some form of disability, are able to bring cheer and bring comfort to your clients as you're serving them. So, so Amy, if you'd like to come up and share your story. And Michael, her great colleague, is here today as well, um, who could share his perspective. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Ivanka, Mr. President. I am so honored to be joined by my employee, Michael, who you will hear from in just a moment. Biddy and Bo's coffee is more than a coffee shop. It's a human rights movement. We employ 120 people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and for most of them, it's their first paying job, which made the decision for us to temporarily close all five of our shops especially difficult. But thanks to the Paycheck Protection Program and the incredible team at Live Oak Bank, all 120 of our employees are back on the payroll today and working from home, writing handwritten notes that we include with each online order we ship. I know everyone is ready to return to normal, but I believe it's time for a new normal, one where people with disabilities are valued especially in the workplace. As a recipient of the PPP loan, we will continue to take up the charge and help everyone, especially people with disabilities, pursue the American dream. And Michael, would you like to say? Sure. I just hope this thing is you bake for me. So to you, President Trump and Ivanka, thanks a lot for inviting us. Thank you, Mr. President, for having us. I love my job, and I am excited about going back to work. At B and Bows, we like to use the phrase called not broken. That means me and all my amazing coworkers are not broken, and we have lots to offer. I know the great country of the United States isn't broken either. So on behalf of myself, Megan, and Amy, and all the employees of B and Bows, Thank you for inviting us over. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. You guys are our family. Thank you. Thank you. That's better than we did. <laughs> much better, Michael. You did a better job. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Stick around. You get to hear the press ask some questions, and they'll probably be a little bit nicer if you're in the audience, right, Amy? That's pretty good. Also, I'd like to ask Tony Stafford, chief, uh, very uh, sort of the boss, I guess you could say, chef and founder. Uh, you're the boss, right? Wouldn't you say? Of Ford's Fish Shack. And I hear it's good stuff. How about explaining? Please. Best? Oh, I'll have it. Be careful. Thank you. Come on up, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm here representing, well, thank you, first of all, for inviting me, inviting Mark, my great employee, with us. Um, we're here representing the restaurant industry, which has been really hurt hard by this with the closures and things like that, so I'll keep it brief. Um, I'd first like to thank the President and the Vice President for leading us through that pandemic. Um, it, is, it has devastated our restaurants. Over the last six weeks, my three restaurants have been devastated. 
dining room closures, had to furlough over 100 people. That was an incredible hard phone call to make about six weeks ago and tell the employees I've never had to lay off a single employee that I just don't have a space for you. Uh, we just don't have, you know, the restaurants are closed and, and it was just extremely hard and it was very emotional and it was one of the hardest th choices I ever had to make. So um, it, it was tough, but I, I promised every employee we would do our best to bring them back and we would fight every day tooth and nail to get them back into uh, the restaurants and be successful like we were the 10 years before all this terrible stuff happened. And now with the help of the PPP loan and the, um, the success of the PPP loan that we were able to get, I'm going to be able to keep that promise and bring every one of those employees back. So thank you, Secretary Legend Chair. Thank you. And it was, it's been awesome to be able to tell them that we're going to, we're going to weather this storm, we're going to get through this, and we're going to be stronger and, and more agile once this is over. The one thing that you can see with the restaurants, we're surviving out there. We're doing things that we didn't do before with carryout and curbside and delivery and all those meal plans. Those things are awesome to see my fellow uh, industry uh, leaders out there doing in the restaurant industry. So I commend every one of those restaurants that's fighting to survive out there. And so thank you all for that. Um, we will get through this. We will welcome our guests back. And we, once our state opens up, we'll welcome them back and thank them and thank them for their support through all this. I have amazing stories of guests coming into our restaurant the day after the closures to just give us tips, give us cash to give to our employees we had to furlough. So those great stories that will not be forgotten from any of our guests. So thank you for that. And I look forward to the one day when all restaurants and all small businesses can reopen and be as successful as they were before. So thank you very much. Mark. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Mark Underwood. Uh, I'm an employee of Ford's Fish Shack. So I am a living example of what your plan has done. Uh, I'm a husband, father of five, my mother lives with me, and just listening to Tony talk about that day when the layoffs happened, it's a little emotional, but um, with the PPP, it has now given life to my family, uh, it has injected hope in our business, and uh, it's allowing us to fight the fight. So I appreciate it from everybody on your team uh, to help us get through this issue that we're going through. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is he a great chef or a good chef? He's a great chef. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's a great story. Your mother lives with you, five children. That's a great story. So that was a rough day, right? Wasn't it? Huh? Never happened to you before, probably. Yeah. Happened to a lot of people. It never happened before. So, but we're bringing it all back. Uh, you know, there have been a couple of places that have opened and. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Tony. They have some restaurants, and they have lines that are very long to get in. People want to be back. They want to come back. We're going to bring a country back. They want to get to work. And I know you were in that category very much, so it's great. Thank you, fellas, very much. Jackie Crick, CEO and founder of ECU Communications. Jackie, please. get in trouble for touching it. See, they'll say, he touched the microphone. What am I going to do? Thank you, Mr. President, Ivanka, Secretary Mnuchin, and Administrator Carranza. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here. My name is Jackie Crick. I'm originally from Bogota, Colombia, in South America. Yay. And um, I've been here many years. And a big part of those years that I've been here, I've been CEO of ECU Communications, which I founded 16 years ago. We uh, focus on advertising and marketing with niche products for uh, uh, diversity recruitment and outreach programs. But more than anything, we're a woman-owned small business, minority-owned 100%. So just like many of the stories that I've heard before me, and I'm sure the ones that are coming, uh, we are concerned about the future. And being able to get that PPP loan has given me and my staff uh, a little peace of mind to know that we're going to be OK. Just in, at the end of February, I hired three more staff members. Right. We're 30 now. Right. So when we heard the news about going home and working from home or not being able to work from home, you know, the first thing that goes, goes to your mind is how am I going to support or tell these folks that they need to go. 
being able to get the PPP loan has given me the, the, the ability to have that peace of mind that I'll keep them, their treasure staff, and I'll be able to continue to focus on my program. Thank you so much for what you do, for your leadership. Thank you. Great job. Thanks. Thank you, Jackie. Great job. Chris Stansbury, co-founder and partner, West Virginia Eye Consultants. I like West Virginia, you know. I like it. We'll put that up. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ivanka, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, Madam Administrator. Appreciate the opportunity to be here today. It's uh, just an honor and a privilege as a small business owner. It's very meaningful uh, to have this opportunity. My company is called West Virginia Eye Consultants, based out of Charleston, West Virginia. And we started in 2011, and we had two doctors, one employee, and one location. And over the last nine years, we've been blessed with a lot of growth. We've worked hard. And in February, we celebrated our ninth anniversary the seven locations, seven doctors, and almost 60 employees. Yeah. So it's, it's been a great ride. Uh, but just a month later, thanks to COVID-19, we shut most of it down. And my partners and I were just overwhelmed, just bewildered. We weren't sure how we were going to survive this. Uh, but thankfully, Congress passed the CARES Act, and President Trump signed that into law. And as part of that, the PPP loans became available. And my partners and I applied for PPP loan through the SBA, and we were so gracious and so, so thankful to receive that because it's been a lifeline for us. As soon as we received those funds, we were able to start paying uh, our utilities, our rent, and start bringing some of those employees back that we need to get staged to begin to reopen the economy. And so we're just so grateful for President Trump's leadership and uh, Congress for working with him to get us through this crisis. So thank you so much, sir. We appreciate thank all you, your help. So you do eye examinations, doctor? Yes, sir. And you do uh, glasses and all of that? I may have to see you, <laughs> OK? I guarantee you're probably better than these high-priced people. I used to see the highest price, and they were not the best. I'll bet you're better than all of them. So I may have to see you, doctor. I'm serious about it. We can do something quickly, all right? You go — you move quickly, too, right? No long meetings. Good. I may have to see you, doctor. Thank you. Uh, Tissa Clark, President and CEO, J.D. Clark Professional Services. J.D. Clark. Hi. Come on up. Thank you, Mr. President, Ivanka, Mr. Secretary, and Madam Administrator. I am Tisa Clark, President and CEO of J.D. Clark Professional Services. I am a general contractor and property maintenance manager for the affordable housing, hospitality, as well as our government agencies, particularly our nonprofits. Most of my employees are the underserved, underemployed, or unemployed. And having the opportunity to be able to apply for a program such as the Paycheck Protection Program allowed me to keep those individuals employed. As a small business owner, my company is based out of Prince George's County, Maryland, and I've been in business for 12 years. And as a small business owner, we never want to fire or lay off, and even to the extent of ourselves not receiving a paycheck. And so I foregoed my paycheck until I could get funds. And so now with the funding that we received via m and Bank on last Monday, it has allowed us to continue to pay our staff and for even myself as the business owner to once again take a paycheck. So this program is phenomenal for our small businesses. Also, as a side note, uh, Madam Administrator, I did also apply for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and I did receive my advance on Tuesday of last week. So these programs are very critical for the small business community, but I do believe that we as small business are strong and we are resilient and we will bounce back. Thank you. Have you ever thought about running for office? You could do it very easily. Huh? You are something. That's a very good job. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Luke Bernstein, Executive Vice President, Chief Retail Officer, and Chief Communications Officer for Orrstown Bank. Come on up, Luke. Thank you, Mr. President. Ivanka, Secretary Mnuchin, Administrator Carranza. I'm Luke Bernstein, proud to be here representing Orrstown Bank. I'm proud of our board, I'm proud of our entire team, and I'm proud of my fellow community bankers throughout the country who have rolled up their sleeves and worked tirelessly to help communities working around the clock and helping them gain access to paycheck protection funds. Orrstown is a small 101-year-old community bank based in Pennsylvania and Maryland. And in just 14 days, we were able to process approximately 1,500 paycheck protection loans, totaling $370 million. In those two weeks, Orrstown processed more loans in total amount than we did in an average year last year. We did more SBA loans in 14 days than in our entire 101 year history. Why? because this is about the communities. This is not about Orstown Bank. This is not about banks. This is about people. The stories you're hearing today, this is about what's going on in Main Street. The stories of what's happening with the Paycheck Protection Program are not only heartwarming, they're inspirational. We're helping pizza shops, delis, healthcare workers, repair shops, construction companies, and countless others get access to these funds. These people need this money they're getting a lifeline through this program. Every job is life-sustaining to someone, and the PPP is saving the livelihoods of those in our communities. We want to thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership during this extraordinary and unprecedented time, and for partnering with community banks and Congress to help us and give us the opportunity to do what we do best, and that serve our communities through the good times and the bad. You have unleashed the innovation of the private industry, and we are going to respond. We also want to thank Secretary Mnuchin and Administrator Carranza and Congress for supporting this program and giving the opportunity to community banks around the country to join together and help those in need. With this program, we can do that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luke. That's a beautiful job. Brandon Hudson. President Ed and Jim's Body Shop. I know what that means. I'll bet you fix beautiful cars. You make them beautiful, right? I'll bet you do. Please come up. Right. Thank you, Mr. President, and Ivanka, Secretary. And uh, instead of celebrating on our anniversary on April 1st of being in business, uh, we began furloughing employees. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank President Trump for quickly signing uh, the PPP into action. Because of this program, Ed and Jim's is able to rehire all of our furloughed employees and provide them with a paycheck starting this week. This program has given our small business the funds needed to operate and maintain through this crisis. With everything we've gone through, I can't extend our thank you enough to President Trump for everything he's done for small businesses like us and the automotive industry at a time where our business really depends on people leaving their house and driving. So, Mr. President, thank you very much for what you've done, for what you've done for us and the industry. Thank you. Thank you. And what do you do with cars? Explain. Uh, our businesses, we repair cars. We're a collision repair shop in Parkville, Maryland. So uh, we work with a lot of insurance companies. We have walking customers. So if you get into an accident, unfortunately, we're here to help you out. Can you generally fix, like when there's a problem with a car, can you generally fix it without sending for new uh, Pieces, yeah. or do you generally have to put new pieces on if it's a big uh, it collision? De it depends. A big collision, we're mostly probably replacing some stuff, but we can repair a lot of things. So, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough that we are able to repair a lot of things, but, you know, with the demand for manufacturers to move to producing other things, such as PPE right. and things like right. that, you know, we're a little nervous about what that means for the future for us right now. But, you know, we know well, now you'll, do the right, you'll do the right thing for us. After today, you'll have a lot of customers. <laughs> we appreciate That's you, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Ali Mills, Executive Vice President, Plum Contracting, Inc. Would you like to have come, — come on up here. He was so good. Put that, put that mask on the way you had it. He did. Thank you, President Trump, Ivanka, Secretary, Madam Administrator. 
I am here representing the highway industry. Plum Contracting is a third generation union highway and bridge contractor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With Pennsylvania's winter construction shutdowns, we have been left with little revenue coming into a new season. COVID-19 abruptly halted all highway work on March 16th in our state. With very little revenue at this point of the season, we were forced to sadly lay off a majority of our employees, about 125, which included trades and management. There were a lot of sleepless nights and fear of losing it all. The payroll protection program was and remains the engine that is carrying our business through this shutdown. We wouldn't survive without it. With, the, with our PPP approval, by May 1st, we anticipate our company running at full capacity when the highway industry is permitted to return back to work. We applaud you, Mr. President, for your interest in the welfare of America's small business and the American worker. And thanks to all that, my company will be here to work on a big infrastructure program Good. very soon when you're ready to do that. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. I was with Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, which is interesting from your standpoint, because we, uh, we talked about the business that you're in. And he noticed that right into uh, the immediate shutdown, he noticed there was very few cars on the road. And he did very opposite of what a lot of governors did. He said, this is a great time to fix our roads and highways. And I said, as soon as he said it, this was in the Oval Office two hours ago, he said, uh, I noticed there was very few cars. And isn't that better than fixing them during rush hours and when there's traffic and when it's booming, like hopefully over the next few months it's going to be again, just like it was before, the best we've ever had, and then we had to close it down. So uh, he's fixing roads and bridges and uh, doing a tremendous amount of work during this period of time, and I thought it was very smart. So it's a little bit the opposite, but to each his own, right? To each his own, but it made a lot of sense to me when I heard it. I'd like to ask uh, Secretary Mnuchin to uh, come up and explain just a little bit about how well it's going, how the kind of numbers, the kind of records, to a point where there's never been anything like this, loans coming in, and how the loans are actually smaller than in phase one. And that makes us happy, because that means smaller businesses, and that's where we uh, — that's what we're looking at. That's what we're aiming at this time. Please, Steve. Th thank you, Mr. President. And uh, Ivanka, thank you for putting this together. Your stories are the stories of the 60 million American workers that are ha gonna have the benefits of the close to a trillion dollars that the President and Congress have invested in small business to protect you and put you back to work. That's over $650 billion in the PPP. That's over $300 billion in disaster loans. And that's over $20 billion of grants. And I know the press has commented on a, a lot of big companies that inappropriately took the money, and we've been very clear, we announced today, that any loan over $2 million will have a full review for forgiveness before they're repaid, because this is the story of small business here. And I am so pleased to see how this is working. So thank you, Mr. President. I'd also just like to comment uh, we're going to be up to close to 120 million of direct deposits in checks for the economic impact payments. If you have not received it yet, please go to irs.gov, get my payment. We made some corrections to the website over the weekend. Please go on and check your payment. If you haven't received your payment, upload your information so we can get you the money. The combination of the direct payments, the PPP, the disaster loans, and enhanced unemployment insurance is the investment that the President has made in American business and American workers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Steve. Very much. And on the enhanced — thank you. And, Steve, on the enhanced payments, we're really looking to the state to uh, give that out. And, unfortunately, some of the states have very old computerized equipment from many generations ago. Uh, but uh, they have the money to give out, and they'll give it out as it comes. And hopefully, they'll be able to do the job. Some states have been very efficient, and others have had a hard time. But you'll work with the ones that have had a hard time. But we rely on the states, and we are relying on the states to get it out as quickly as they can, considering especially some of 
the equipment they have. Maybe now they'll be able to buy new equipment, right? When we get all finished, we'll have nice new computerized equipment so they can do it. Uh, with that, if you'd like to ask a few questions, I think this would be a good time because with these incredible people, uh, this is the media. You've heard me talking about it on occasion. Seldom, right? But on occasion. And I think with you in the room, I have a feeling that they'll ask me much nicer questions. They'll tone them down, right? And thank you for the apology. I appreciate it. That was very nice. Yahoo. I appreciate it. It was very nice. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Jim, go ahead. Hi, Mr. President. Uh, today, the U.S. hit a grim milestone of one million cases of the coronavirus. Uh, back in late February, you predicted that the number of cases would go down to zero. How did we get from your prediction of zero to one million? Well, it will go down to zero, ultimately. And you have to understand, when it comes to cases, we do much more testing than anybody else. So we could go to some of these other countries, you know, as an example, China. If you test, you're going to show many more cases. So we're testing. We're doing more testing than any other country in the world by far, which we, uh, we just discussed over in the Oval Office. So we're going to show more cases because we're doing much, much more testing, double anybody else. Somebody said if you add everybody else combined, that would be a number. And it will be at the, the appropriate time. It will be down to zero, like we said. Time saying that the number of cases would go up, we would have community spread. Well, uh, experts, Dr. Messing, yeah, yeah. Warning about this. Right. Also, Another experts, story. many very good experts, very good people too, said that this would never affect the United States. It wouldn't affect Europe. It wouldn't affect uh, anything outside of China. So we were listening to experts, and we always will listen to experts. But uh, the experts got it wrong. A lot of people got it wrong, and. Uh, a lot of people had no idea it would be this serious. I listened to experts. Uh, I'll tell you what, I did something that the experts thought I shouldn't have done. I closed down our country and our borders. I did a ban on China from coming in, other than U.S. citizens. And uh, we did very strong checks on even our U.S. citizens. Ron DeSantis was telling me before that when they came in, people were put into quarantine, people were checked, and we're doing that now. So, yeah, I think we did something well ahead of schedule. We did that at the end of January. People were talking about this wouldn't have an impact, as you know, even into March. So uh, I, th I think we've done a great job in the sense that uh, we were early. I think say, by, by banning China, by banning China and banning people coming in who would have been very heavily infected, we probably saved hundreds of thousands of lives. So on that, I'm very proud. Yeah, please. payments to American taxpayers directly. Democrats, of course, up on the Hill are talking about the idea of a guaranteed income, which obviously could go on for months and months and months. Yeah. What about another round of Well, I like the idea of payroll tax cuts. I've liked that from the beginning. That was a thing that I really uh, would love to see happen. A lot of economists would agree with me. A lot of uh, people agree with me. And I think, frankly, it's simple. It's not the big distribution, and it would really uh, be an incentive for people to come back to work and for employers to hire uh, the double tax on the company and also on the person. Uh, that's what I like, and uh, something like that could happen. Also, uh, I think you have to look, uh, because a lot of people are talking, to, I assume your next question would be about states. And uh, Steve and I talk about it, and I talk about it with Mitch and with Kevin and with everybody. and. Uh, the problem with the states is we're not looking to recover 25 years of bad management and to give them the money that uh, they lost. That's unfair to other states. Now, if it's COVID-related, I guess we can talk about it. But we'd want certain things also, including sanctuary city adjustments, because we have so many people in sanctuary cities, which I don't even think are popular, even by radical left folks, because what's happening is uh, people are being protected that shouldn't be protected, and a lot of bad things are happening with sanctuary cities. But that's just standing up here answering this question. That's one of the things I think about. Uh, if we were going to do something for the states, I think they'd probably want a uh, something having to do with sanctuary cities, something having to do with other different points that we can discuss uh, a little bit later on. Yeah, uh, Jeff, go ahead, please. Mr. President, you're going to sign an executive order today about the meat packaging plants. It affects liability for them. What efforts or what measures are you looking at for liability for other industries and other businesses? Well, we haven't been talked about. It hasn't been asked on other industries yet. But with the meatpacking and with the transportation, uh, we have had some difficulty where 
they're having a liability that's really unfair to them. And we're going to be doing that. I think, Mark, uh, we're going to be doing that fairly soon. It's getting uh, — it's getting drawn up. I should be signing that over the next hour or so, taking the liability, which frees up the entire system. And I fully understand it. Not their fault. Yeah, please, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, uh, uh, over here first. Mr. President, I just want to go back to uh, what we discussed a little earlier today. Are you considering asking airlines to test passengers on international, but also domestic flights? Yeah, we're looking at doing it on the international flights coming out of areas that are heavily in infected. Uh, as you know, Brazil is getting to that category. I think they're going to be okay. I hope they're going to be okay. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, but uh, the President. But I think that uh, we're going to look at it from the standpoint I was discussing that with the Governor of Florida, with Ron, a little while ago. So we're going to be looking at that coming in from other uh, countries, frankly. But South America seems to be one that's talked about because they have so much business going into Florida. With all of that being said, Florida's done incredibly well, and they're starting to open up and open up very rapidly. But we will be uh, looking into that in the very near future. We're looking at it very strongly. Uh, either the airlines or government, one or the other. We're working with the airlines. Maybe it's a combination of both. Kristen, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Some health experts say the U.S. needs 5 million tests per day by June in order to safely reopen. You unveiled a plan yesterday that will increase testing, but not by that much. Why not? And can you get to that benchmark? Well, it will increase it, and it'll increase it by much more than that in the very near future. We're way ahead of everyone on testing. Uh, we haven't been uh, given uh, the uh, press in terms of, I think, fairness of the press, but that's okay. And that's why I appreciated the the uh, statement before by Yahoo. Uh, be, we are way ahead on testing. We are the best in the world on testing. We've tested much more than anybody else times two. Uh, or every country combined. We've tested more than every country combined. And they keep talking about South Korea. And I'm very friendly, as you know, with President Moon, who just had a great victory, a new victory, as we're very happy about. But uh, he will tell you how well the United States has done on testing. And he told me that very strongly. Uh, the, the quality of our test is the best, and the number is the best. Now, with all of that being said, we will be going uh, to an even higher number, and it goes up exponentially. And I've told you that we inherited a very broken test, a broken system, and a broken test. And within a short period of time, we were setting records. So we have set records. We've done more than the entire world combined. We've done more than any other country in the world. So I think we've done a really good job. Now, with that being said, not everybody feels as strongly about testing as others. We have some governors that are very strong on testing. We have other governors, frankly, that aren't nearly as strong on testing. Their test is uh, much more modest, and their real test is when people stop getting sick, and they'll be able to do that, too. And I understand both systems very well. But we're going to maximum testing, even though some people won't even want to use it. Mr. Edgar, you're saying you're confident you can surpass 5 million tests per day? Is that — Oh, well, we're going to be there very soon. Uh, if you look at the numbers, it could be that we're getting very close. I mean, I don't have the exact numbers. We would have had them if you asked me the same question a little while ago, because people with the statistics were there. Uh, we're going to be there very soon. We're, we're really — we're really doing — I mean, I watched your report on NBC today, and it was an incorrect report, because we're really doing a great job on testing. Uh, unfortunately, the — the administration, the people that work our government, hasn't been given the kind of credit that it deserves. Uh, last month, it was about ventilators. Now we have so many that we're able to give them to Italy, France, Spain. Other countries have been asking us for ventilators. We're making over 150,000. We've distributed thousands and thousands. Uh, New York is in great shape with what we've done, as you know. Uh, New Jersey's in great shape. We spoke just recently. Uh, Ivanka just spoke with the governor. And they're in very good shape with the ventilators. I mean, everybody has, and most of them have far more than they'll ever need. They're starting to send them back. So nobody went without a ventilator. And yet, if you read the media from a month and a half ago, it was all about ventilators. And ventilators are tough. That's, that was a tough thing. But we should be very proud of our country. We took assembly lines, and they converted from cars and other things into ventilators. And the job that we've seen has not been seen since World War II. Uh, what they have done in terms of the manufacture of very high-grade ventilators is amazing. So now we don't hear about that. And I noticed that the testing is starting to die down because we now have the best testing anywhere in the world by far. And we have more. 
And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. I'm happy about it. Uh, we had a call yesterday with governors, and I will say that uh, I'm sure many of you were on that call, even though you shouldn't have been. They shouldn't have been, Amy, but they were. I wonder how that happened. But you heard the uh, the governors were thrilled. Now, the following day, if you'll get a Democrat on the call, they'll say, you know, I saw some of them today. They were so thrilled yesterday on a call that they thought was a close call. And today, they were good, but they weren't the same as they were yesterday, because that's the business. They want to try and win on November 3rd. But we're doing a job the likes of which nobody's ever done. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about people in the Army Corps of Engineers, where we built hospitals, where we built thousands and thousands of beds all over the country. New York, what we did was incredible. 2,900 beds in a matter of days, what they've done is so incredible. And FEMA, what they've done. And the doctors and the professionals and all of the people that you see me with all the time, uh, you know, these are great people. And they've really done a great job. And now our country's opening up again, and I think it's going to be very, very successful. I think that, I mean, Larry is here. Uh, I, we talked about it, and we talk about it all the time. I think that uh, third quarter, it's obviously a transition quarter, but I think it's going to be Okay, maybe better than okay. Larry thinks better than okay. I think uh, even more so than I do. And then I think fourth quarter will be great. And I think next year is going to be a tremendous year for this country. Jennifer? Yes, I'm a CPT loan. Can you say who should be responsible for that review that Secretary Mnuchin mentions on the loan of up to a million? Who exactly will be responsible? The SBA will be responsible. And They'll be, they have a team of people. They'll bring in additional people. And, and again, I want to assure the American public and the American taxpayers, we will make sure that these certifications were done accurately or the loans won't be forgiven and there will be liability. I think Rich is looking at it, as I do to an extent, as the infrastructure. He likes infrastructure. We all do. We have to rebuild our country. Uh, $8 trillion has been spent. I wasn't in favor of it. I can tell you that in the Middle East. $8 trillion. Think of it. And yet, you wanted to fix a pothole in a roadway or in a highway in this country, and uh, you didn't do it because they didn't have the money because so much money was spent in the Middle East. Uh, well, that's, as you know, uh, a whole different story now. We're going to do, we want to do infrastructure, but a lot of people, a lot of the Republicans would like to keep that as a separate bill. So we'll see how that works out, Jennifer. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, please. Mr. President, uh, you said at the top of your remarks that you feel the worst of the pandemic is behind us. But without a treatment, without a vaccine, the state's now reopening. How can you be so sure? Well, I think that, like other things, uh, we're going to — hopefully, we're going to come up with a vaccine. You never know about a vaccine, but tremendous progress has been made. Johnson & Johnson and Oxford and lots of good things. You've been hearing the same things as I do. Uh, tremendous progress has been made, we think, on a vaccine. You always have to say think, and then you have to test it, and that takes a period of time. But uh, a lot of movement and a lot of progress has been made on a vaccine. But I think what happens is it's going to go away. This is going to go away. And uh, whether it comes back in a modified form in the fall, we'll be able to handle it. We'll be able to put out spurts. And uh, we're very prepared to handle it. We've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about it, the invisible enemy. It's a bad enemy. It's a very tough enemy. But we've learned a lot. It's in 184 countries, as you hear me say often. It's hard to believe. It's inconceivable. It should have been stopped at the source, which was China. It should have been stopped very much at the source, but it wasn't. And uh, now we have 184 countries going through hell. But I think that uh, — I think that uh, a lot of good things are going to happen. And I really believe that uh, fourth quarter is going to be maybe tremendous. And the uh, next year, I think, has a chance to be really uh, getting close to record-setting. We hope so. We hope we can be back where we were. We had the strongest economy anywhere in the world, and I hope we're going to be back there again. Go ahead, please. Mr. President, you, you've spoken about your friend who passed away. I was wondering if you've spoken to the families of anyone else who has lost uh, loved ones to COVID-19, if there's any particular uh, stories that have affected you? Well, I have, I have many people. I know many stories. I've spoken to three, maybe, I guess, four families unrelated to me. I did. I lost a very good friend. I also lost three other friends uh, 
two of whom I didn't know as well, but they were friends and people I did business with, and probably almost everybody in the room did. And it's a uh, it's a bad death. It's not a it's it's a bad thing. It it grips onto some people. Now we found out that young people do extraordinarily well. That's why I think we can start thinking about schools. But of course, we're ending the school season, so you know it wouldn't be probably you'd be back. You wouldn't be back for too long. I noticed where Purdue University, a great school in a great state, wants to open and have students come in. I think that's correct. Uh, some colleges, I think I saw Harvard wants to have students come back in the fall. I would hope that they'd have, a, have students. I think that uh, the whole concept of computer learning is wonderful, but it's not tele tele-learning. But it's not the same thing as uh, being in a classroom in a great college or a college of any kind, college, university. There's nothing. You can't replace that. So hopefully, they're going to be coming back. Young people do very well with this uh, horrible scourge. They do very well. So uh, I am going to uh, see you tomorrow, and we'll have other things to talk about. We have a lot of uh, interesting things. I don't think we should have a news conference today, because this is a news conference. In addition, it's a celebration of these incredible people that have done such a good job. And uh, I think we found a couple of stars in this room today. I won't tell you who, but there are a couple. This guy right here is the biggest star in the room, <laughs> right? We'll all agree he's the big I, I vote. I vote for you, okay? Great job you've done. And I really appreciate it, too. I appreciate you being here. Couldn't have done better. Of course, uh, Megan and I and Amy would like to know if you and some of your hostess, um, staff members, bodyguards, or anybody in your company would like to come to Annapolis to, to our company. Be careful. That could happen. <laughs> that could happen. Be careful. We'll have to do that, Amy. I think. Uh, we could maybe we could do something like that. You're very good. He's stolen the show, right? Do we agree, Doc? I'll tell you. I'm getting ready with the eyes. Come on with me if you want. Do a quick one. I want to save a lot of time. We need time. We're opening up the country, Doc, so we need a little time. We can't spend too much. Uh, I don't want to spend two and a half hours at an eye doctor, right? Okay. So we'll think about that. We want to do that. Uh, I want to thank everybody, and in particular Jovita. I want to thank you very much, and Steve. You're working. Uh, I can call Steve at any time. It's, I can call him at 2 in the morning, 6 in the morning. It doesn't make any difference. I say, did I wake you? The answer is always no. He's uh, doing a great job. We're proud of him. And everybody is. Everybody. Our government, uh, we have to be proud of our government, and we have to be proud of our country. These are really terrific people. We're going through a period of time, the likes of which we've never seen in this country before. Certainly, uh, even if you go back into 1917, uh, it was the worst of all time, but it was also uh, not as bad here. It was very bad. It was very rough. It was a bad one, but it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, wasn't quite like what we're going through right now. And it's because of the amazing, when you look at how contagious this is, where people literally just being in the same area with other people, it's, uh, it catches. So, uh, I'm very proud of this country, I have to say. I'm very proud to be your president, and I'm very proud of this country. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. They should come too if they want. They'll be, they will. They will. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.